uh, my name is Bob Herbst, is the compatibility between uh, airports and play fields. That what we're proposing is, is both accepted and safe. So you, you have an aerial of uh, the Petaluma Airport in front of you. You can see the runway clearly, runway 29. At the bottom side, on airport property, is the Wiseman Youth Park. Um, there's both playgrounds in this area, children's playgrounds, two outdoor soccer fields, two baseball fields, uh, and those are located less than 400 feet from the active runway. Santa Monica Airport is, is an instructive example. This is actually a much larger airport than either San Rafael Airport or Petaluma Airport. And at this facility, excuse me, they have a soccer park and playground uh, located near the runway. Also, Little League fields located right on the runway ramp. Um, in addition, there are buildings, large buildings, located in very close proximity to the runway. And I, I wanted to uh, note that simply because there's, there have been concerns addressed about the proximity of our building. Uh, and, uh, moving out of the state, Monroe Custor, Custer Airport. A plane crash in Monroe, Michigan, claims the lives of three people. Good evening, I'm Sean Hegarty. And I'm Laura Emerson. Here is the news for Tuesday, March 29th. The crash happened around 4 o'clock this afternoon in Munson Park in a soccer field. That is in the 2700 block of North Custer Road in the city of Monroe near the Custer Airport. And there were teens just a few dozen feet away from where this plane went down. Take a live look at the site of the crash. The plane remains there tonight. This park, Munson Park here in Monroe, sits just feet away from houses, soccer fields, and tennis courts. The explosion melted most of the plane. Only the tail section remains partly intact. Regan O'Connor is a tennis player at St. Mary's Catholic Central. She and her teammates were practicing nearby when the plane went down. He came around to the outer part of the, <laughs> to the outer part of the court. <laughs> he started coming back. He just started. He just crashed. It was. It's like you see in the movies where it's just the funnel and then the cloud, and it's a sight I'll never forget. Despite proximity to an active runway. The project provides minimal mitigations for the safety of aviators and those on the ground. Elements of the project intrude on the ascending clear zone. The mitigations proposed are two obstruction lights. The current staff report tells us this drawing may not accurately depict built site conditions and the obstruction lights may not be necessary once the project is built. Obstruction lights are purposely intrusive and bright. They are meant to be seen from the air for thousands of feet in all directions, at night and during inclement weather. Yet the EIR has not one word about their impact or specifications of these lights, which will flash all night long. The obstruction lights should be analyzed before certifying the EIR. The EIR uses zones to assess the risks associated with airplane crashes next to the runway. However, the zones actually hide the actual distribution of those accidents within the zones. Here's that same data for the zones plotted on a distribution chart. Each circle represents one or more crashes. We've superimposed the zone chart on the distribution chart to show that the majority of the accidents are clustered near the end of the runway. Next, we added the facility in its scale location, and we see that arrival accidents, as well as the corresponding departure accidents, are concentrated right where the facility will be. This recreation of an actual accident that happened some years ago at the San Rafael Airport is illustrative of the challenges at this site. You are looking at a newspaper photo of a plane that crashed into the South Fork of Galenas Creek. Using the Marin County Civic Center, visible in the distance, we are able to accurately determine where this plane came to rest. The contemporaneous report describes how the pilot lost control of his airplane after failing to gain enough altitude on takeoff, crashed into the levee, and tumbled into the creek. The first obstruction that this out-of-control airplane hit was the levee, several hundred feet perpendicular to the runway. From above, here is the path the ill-fated airplane followed. Statistically, it is just as likely for an accident similar to this to veer in the opposite direction. Here is an image of that trajectory. And now, 
Here is a simulation of what a pilot might see during a low altitude, out of control flight over the proposed facility. In this scenario, the first obstruction encountered would not be a levee.